Alzheimer's Baby Grandpa. Welcome to Grandpa. Welcome to episode 109. We're going to be doing a two-year update on Doug Martin. Remember, he had a crash two years ago today, and this is his update. So this is not a live show. It's not a very long show. Uh, this is Valentine's Day, so make sure that you're, uh, you spend more time with your honey than you do with us online talking about paramotors. Anyways, on with the show. So I was asked to give a quick update as to where I'm at and all that kind of stuff. We're coming up on two years. Um, yeah, next week, Monday is two years. Uh, wow, two years. Tonight, for the first time, a thrill seeker sharing a story of survival. About a month ago, we first reported the parrot motor pilot from Paw Paw, who was in critical condition after a crash landing. PPG Grandpa's Paramotor Podcast, otherwise known as ClearProptv.com. Uh, Doug, if you would, give us a little bit of background. What happened on uh, Valentine's Day? I uh, made a bad judgment out flying one evening. Was a little too bumpy out, flying way too low. I ended up hitting the lake uh, real close to my home here. Relatively high rate of speed, uh, really a full dive in the paramotor. When I hit the lake, I really kind of thought I was going to uh, hit the lake and bounce. That's the last thing I remember is hitting the lake. Basically, he's saying, whoa, that felt weird. Whoa, that felt weird. Yikes, that was scary. He says, yikes, that's right. scary. And then right here, he says, glad that's over with. He says, glad that's over with. And then this happened. I still don't understand how you could make such a huge spin straight down into the ice like that. You're a miracle to be alive, man. Absolutely. Yeah, I shouldn't have survived the impact in the first place. Realistically, yeah. It was a really, really terrible event that every single event afterwards worked fantastic. And if it wouldn't have been for every one of those events, I wouldn't be here. Well, a lot of things have made a lot of progress in the past two years. Um, realistically, I would imagine recovery-wise, this is about what I get. Everything can be made stronger. However, there are certain things that will never be 100% right. My ankles will never be 100% right. Um, they're decent. They're letting me do a lot of the stuff I want to. Um, I have foot launched a few times. However, they're not trustworthy. I really will probably stick with the retractor trike for a while at least. I do have the ability to foot launch if I want to, but uh, I, I know the last thing I really want to do is injure something that's not 100%. So, may stupid make good decisions screwing that up for me. Oh, we have people coming in. Well, big improvements. Obviously, big improvements in my voice. Again, that's something that's never going to be right. Um, it will get stronger and stronger, but really, it's not going to be where it ever was before. So a lot of the damage that I actually did incur in the accident, um, the nerve damage by far is the hardest to overcome. That doesn't really heal. I can kind of adapt and overcome teach things to do what they're supposed to. I've done a pretty good job of relearning how to swallow, how to talk, how to eat, that kind of thing. It's amazing just how much work it takes. A few of the other things that I'm going to have, no matter what, long term. Um, I have an intolerance to temperature change, and really that's because part of the nerve damage was on one of the sites that really does control body temperature. So again, it might get more tolerable. However, it's never gonna be right. So people always ask, do I know what actually happened? And in all honesty, it took probably 20 or 30 hours of flight time to kind of have it all sink in. I know for certain now exactly the string of events that led to my accident. And uh, there was one on the internet not that long ago about a gentleman whose brake was dangling, got caught in the prop, actually severed the brake handle off. Man, he was lucky. 
So in my instance, what actually happened was, but if you go back and review the video, when I hit that great big turbulence going over the power plant, that big hit that I took, I'm not sure if maybe that right brake wasn't completely stoked. I'm not sure if maybe when I hit the bump, it was enough to jerk it off the magnet and have it come undone. But in flight, after I hit that big bump, I immediately started making a really strong right-hand turn. When I looked to grab my brakes, this brake was on the magnet, this brake was missing. So I remember looking behind me and I could see the brake line behind my head and no matter what, I could not grab that handle to save my life or the line. So what I ended up actually having to do was in flight while I'm actually beginning my spiral, I had to reach around, grab it with my left arm, pull it through the netting. My handle actually just went between the, the knots of the netting, got hung up in the netting. That was enough for me to get both hands on my brakes. By then I'm in a flat spin right to the ground. And I realize now that really as I was beginning that spiral, Really, I should have grabbed my reserve, thrown my reserve, would have been the smartest thing to do. When I reached over to grab, all I did is start my weight shift, and I really just amplified that spiral a lot. And that kind of locked me into a spiral. The last thing I remember was going straight for the ground, one break in each hand, and I really had no idea if I was over the lake, over water, over who knows what. I didn't. I knew I wasn't over a home or something like that. However, um, I remember looking down and all I wanted to do was try my best to land on my feet and not face first. So I, when I did, buried my brakes. I swung out underneath my wing when I did my ankles and my feet are what hit the ice first. When it did, I kind of punched through the ice. The ice ended up hitting me in the chest, folded me over. So that's when I got put under the ice. And really that was the most dangerous part of all of this. Again, why and how Brad and his daughter heard me hit the lake. Why in the world that man would get up, drive to the end of the road, just to see and then be good enough to climb into the lake himself and pick my head above water, I really have no idea why in the world that happened, really. Um, I have had a bunch of testing over the summer, lots of MRIs and all that stuff. Given my physical condition, they estimate I was probably under the water for right around six minutes, five and a half to six minutes. Realistically, uh, my neurologist right now said, there really isn't any reason why you started breathing on your own. Some of the nerve damage that you have incurred really should have kept you from wanting to breathe. We really have no idea why you started all that and I really don't know either why the good Lord himself saved me. I really don't have any idea, but I'll try to be a good person. I'll always try to pay it forward. And it's gonna make me a better person no matter what. At least, uh, at least I hope so, we'll see. Now, as far as where I've been since all of this, I was injured in February. March, April, May, and June was really me trying to figure out how to swallow, how to eat, how to walk, how to move the right hand side of my body. Really after about eight or nine months, we got to the point where everything now moves pretty much normal again. But really that took nine months, maybe almost a year. At about the nine month mark, when I was pretty sure I had good control of my motor function, that's when I started flying again. Um, for the record, I love my retractor trike. It is just like flying foot launch in the air. 
you almost don't notice it at all and landing and launching is super problem free so I really do enjoy my trike after about 12 months really everything kind of came back how it happened knowing exactly what happened in that event really was a big help when it came to spending more time in the air realizing the chain of events that led up to my accident really was good for the mind it did a good job of kind of putting the mind at ease now i know what like i think now i know what not to do uh, hopefully we don't do that mistake again we'll see but now i know what not to do well in that time um been doing more and more flying really trying to make good decisions i'm not flying on bad days and things like that uh, but i have managed to get quite a bit accomplished hour wise i probably have i probably have about 140 hours on my retractor trike and paramotor and my uh, nivea link 2 wing um, i'm probably be looking for a new wing come this summer i really love the bgds lately it's probably going to be my next wing we'll see actually i'm sure my next wing is probably going to be a nivea car bus because one of the things I did accomplish, and I'm really proud of this, I really thought I was going to get my tandem maybe a year, year and a half after I started flying. We're at like four years now. Um, took me a lot longer to be sure that I was going to be comfortable taking somebody up with me. Me launching, flying around in a paramotor, risking myself that's one thing me taking another person up with me and me being responsible for them and their safety that really was a lot harder to absorb and i'll be honest i know the repercussions of doing something dumb in the air i would never ever want to be responsible for doing that to someone else so took me a long time to kind of figure it out, but I really needed that next step. I was lucky enough that over Christmas break, again, I teach college, I'm lucky enough to have three weeks off over Christmas break. Um, I was lucky enough to go down to One Up Adventures and Travis, Allie, and Kyle, we ended up getting my tandem in my basic flight instructor certification. So now I'm legal for tandem and super excited about that. Uh, I have a Zenith trike coming. Most likely it'll be May or June before it finally gets here. But uh, I had lots of considerations for learn to fly. And in all reality, given the type of flying I intend to do tandem, I really need something that the passenger is very secure in. I don't have to worry about them balancing. I don't have to worry about them weight shifting around. The Xena trike works perfect for that because they're right out in the open up in front. They're locked in nice and neatly. Um, very easy to see over them. Bringing someone up tandem. If I can do that in a really, really quality tandem trike, really just brings, puts the mind at ease a little bit more and it's gonna make the whole process simpler. Uh, it's got a Cosmos 300 on the back of it. Really looking forward to it. When I was down at 1UP, I was lucky enough to be able to do maybe 11 tandem flights, 12. Um, when I was down there also, got to hang out with some really cool people. Got to do a whole bunch of flying there and in uh, Wachula, Florida. So got to see a whole bunch of people that I really do think a lot of. It really was a super great environment. Great people. Can't wait to go back again next year. Probably stay a little longer next year. We'll see. Uh, maybe I'll go a little earlier and stay a little later. Definitely would be worth it. Well, I will say I'm desperately looking forward to summer. Right now we have a solid foot of snow on the ground. It's been fun for snowmobiling and stuff like that, but I haven't been in the air in two weeks. It's kind of driving me crazy. The sad part is, I'm out snowmobiling around. When I come to a stop, 
I'm looking up in the sky, looking at all the clouds, <laughs> seeing if it's flyable. Uh, apparently I have issues. Well, much love y'all. Hope y'all have a great night. Fly on, have fun, go fast, make good decisions. Safety third, don't be a dick, give everything. Peace. So thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. Uh, I'm very glad that Doug is doing well and he is definitely on his way to recovery. Y'all have a wonderful day and happy Valentine's Day. This is Sean Simons, Pick Your Grandpa, Paramotor Podcast, Clear Prop TV, Paratalk.org on Valentine's Day of 2022, episode 109.